Hello, and welcome to another episode of Design Student Savvy. My name is Jillian, and today we are going to learn how to draw a basic kitchen cabinet in SketchUp. Go ahead and open up a brand new SketchUp file. I'm using the architectural feet and inches template and delete the figure that is in there, Lizette. And we're going to build a 24 inch by 24 inch base cabinet today. And my hope is that you'll be able to take the techniques that we use in this tutorial and adapt them to build all sorts of cabinets. So the first thing that we're going to do is build the box. So I'm going to activate my rectangle tool and just starting at the origin, I'm going to draw, start drawing a rectangle or a square and type 24 inches by 24 inches and hit enter. So that 24 inches by 24 inches represents the width and the depth of our cabinet. Then I'm going to use the push-pull tool and pull that box up so that it's 34 and a half inches tall. So 34 and a half inches is the typical height of a base cabinet. And then when you add your one and a half inch countertop, you get to your 36 inch countertop height. So this is pretty typical, very standard for most cabinet companies that it's 34 and a half inches high. And if you want to keep track, we can add some dimensions here so that you can see what everything is. There we go. Okay, so now that we have the overall box in place, uh, let's go ahead and add the toe kick. The toe kick is that recess at the bottom of a base cabinet. I'm going to use a guide and pull that up four inches from the front of the cabinet to indicate the height of my toe kick. And then I'm going to use the pencil tool or the line tool to draw along that guide and divide up that front face into two faces. And then using the push pull tool, I can push that face back four inches, which is a typical depth for a toe kick. And you can see that this dimension was snapped to that corner, so it reduced it by four inches. And I'm gonna go ahead and delete these now that we know what everything is. And I'm going to delete this guide because we don't need it anymore. Now, we could start modeling the door and the drawer right from this point, but I want to add a little bit more detail to my cabinet. So I'm going to actually create uh, the opening that's in here, and so I'm going to offset that face by uh, 0.75 inches, and then I'm going to push this back 23.25 inches. So that will give me a quarter inch frame, or a three quarter inch frame all the way around and a three quarter inch back. And we're going to model a traditional style cabinet, a traditional face frame cabinet versus a frameless cabinet. And just uh, to illustrate or kind of give a, a reference, if you've ever seen IKEA cabinets or European style cabinets, those are frameless cabinets. And in that instance, this is the box of the cabinet and the doors and the drawers would fully cover um, this frame all the way out to the edges with very little reveal. It's about a sixteenth of an inch. Um, and so you wouldn't see any of the box. In a traditional cabinet, so let's say you have some oak cabinets from the 90s in your house, like a lot of people do, um, you would actually see the face frame of the cabinet, which is made up of styles and rails. And so that's the type of cabinet we're going to build today. And since the face frame is going to have a thickness of three quarters of an inch, I'm going to start by just pushing this face back three quarters of an inch so that when we're finished, we'll still have a 24 inch deep box. Okay, so now that we have our box adjusted and we have our opening and our toe kick, I'm going to triple click on it and make it a group. You could also make this a component and call it um, cabinet box 2424 or something like that. Actually, you'd only have to call it, you don't need the second signifier, but whatever makes sense for you. Um, so we're just going to make it a group though today. And I'm going to start by adding the rails. So that, or the stop, yeah, the styles. The styles are the vertical parts of the face frame. So just on one corner, I'm going to use my pencil, come over one and a half inches down to the bottom, back over the corner and just create a rectangle. And then I'm going to push that out 
0.75 inches. So that's our first rail and I'm going to triple click that, make it into a group, and then using my move tool, remember I'm holding down my option key, and I drag over and it makes a copy of it. So now I have my two rails, and then we're just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna come down one and a half inches, and you might have to rotate a little bit, come over, up, and back over, hitting P to activate the push-pull tool, and extruding that vertical rail out one and a half inches as well. And I'm going to make it into a group, and then using my move tool, remember holding down the option or the alt key, depending if you're a PC or a Mac user, dragging it down to make a copy. So there's the beginning of my face frame. Now we're going to have, this is a very typical cabinet, we're going to have a drawer here and a door here. So we need another rail to signify the division between the door opening and the drawer opening. So we're just going to click on this top rail and using our move key and holding down the option or the alt key, we're just gonna drag down and enter six and a half inches and that will give me a five inch opening for my drawer box. Okay, and these are pretty typical measurements. It varies by cabinet company, but um, they're in the range of what you would normally find. Now that we have our face frame, I am going to hold down my shift key and select all of the pieces of the face frame and turn that into a group as well. So we have two groups now, the face frame and the box. So to add the door and drawer, it's pretty simple. What we want is for the door and the drawer to overlap the face frame by a quarter of an inch all the way around. So I'm going to use guides and I'm just going to click on all of these edges of the openings and offset them by a quarter of an inch. So just going around in every edge of both openings, setting a guide that's a quarter of an inch away from it. And then I can just activate my rectangle tool and I can click from corner to corner, P for push-pull, and then pull that out. Um, I, three quarters of an inch is going to work for the doors and drawers as well. Some cabinet companies are an inch thick, but most of them are three quarters of an inch thick. And then, See, let's get the one for the door. Oops. There we go. And now that we have those, we can delete our guides. I'm going to leave the drawer as a slab, just like it is now, but I am going to turn the door into a shaker style door. That just means it has a very simple frame. So I'm going to use my offset tool, click on the face of the door, and drag in two inches. And then I'm going to use my push-pull tool and push that center part back a quarter of an inch. And that just gives us a very simple panel um, on the door. And then I'm going to triple click on the door and make it into a group and triple click on the door, the drawer and make that into a group. Now, the last thing that I wanna do is add knobs to the door and the drawer. And I'm going to use guides to set where I want those to be. So it's gonna be in the middle of the drawer and then I'm going to bring it one inch over and one inch down from the corner of the door so that the knob will be centered um, right in the middle of the style and the rail of the door. Now I already have a knob component loaded that I made um, another time and I'm just going to place it and then rotate it. So I'm clicking on my rotate tool. I'm going to find the um, blue uh, protractor and then I'm going to click on the center of the knob and just rotate it 90 degrees so it's facing in the right direction. And then I am going to use my move tool, get the center of the knob and move it right into place. So you can see it's gonna snap 
there at the cor the intersection of those. And if you're not getting it, you can go to view face style x-ray so you can see that better. And there's the x-ray. And now we can just zoom in and grab that center point again and holding down the option or the alt key, make a copy of that and move it over to the intersection of guides on the door. And then I'll just go ahead and delete my guides. I'm going to turn off the, uh, the x-ray mode. And there you can see is my very simple cabinet. So the last thing that we're going to do is turn this cabinet into a component. And I am going to start by selecting all of the pieces of the cabinet, right clicking on it and saying make component. I'm going to call it cabinet-B24. B24 is a very typical nomenclature for this very simple type of 24 inch base cabinet. And I'm going to set the component axes. Uh, I'm just gonna click in the corner and go ahead and set both the red and the green axes. That way when you insert that component, that's where the axis of the component will be. And I'm going to say create. And now you can see up in my component list, it says cabinet B24. So if I click it, you can see there it is. And you can see as I go to set it, it's setting it from that corner where we set the axis. So that's why it's nice to set the axis to something that's useful for you instead of someplace that's out in space or something that doesn't really mean anything. So I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you head on over to designstudentsavvy.com, you can download the file with this cabinet in it so that you can have it for yourself or um, and also the knob component that is included in the file. And when you sign up, you subscribe, automatically subscribe to my newsletter so you'll always be informed of the latest tutorials. Um, it's good to subscribe both on YouTube and on my newsletter list because sometimes I put out the tutorials in blog post form before I put out the videos. So that way um, you can have it in both formats and be notified when both are published. And if you like this and you found it helpful, I would so appreciate you giving this video a thumbs up and that you do subscribe. Thank you and I will talk to you soon.